What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ink Drink Think, episode 19. In honor of the quartet that we have here tonight, the original four members of Ink Drink Think, we are covering the first family of Marvel Comics, Fantastic Four. As always, I'm your host, Michael Pickard. And as always, I'm joined by my wonderfully talented co-hosts and friends, Johnny Wise. You have the floor. Hello, uh, I'm Johnny. Um, So I am drawing Mr. Fantastic, Stretchy Man. Um, and I was just saying that I had a bit of an easy one on this one because I've pretty much just, uh, drawn him doing science. He's just doing science things. <laughs> um, he's, he's working on the computers and there's some computers around him. I put Dr. Doom in there on one of the computer screens just cause I really wanted to draw Dr. Doom and I hadn't in ages. So I figured, Hey, well, he's That's just awesome. on one of the screens always there always on the computer for Reed to just look back up and be like, that's the guy. <laughs> One day I'm going to kill him <laughs> with science. <laughs> uh, hopefully it should go all right. Um, Reed's being a little bit stretchy, like marginally stretchy, just enough to like how we anyone would be a bit stretchy if you could. Like if just something's mm. not really that near to you, you just kind of stretch a bit. So his arms are just kind of like that much longer than they should be just so that he doesn't have to move too much. I don't know if that's um, the first thing most people would go to with being slightly more stretchy, but of course I think. <laughs> I, I, there's, there's laziness first, and then there's like lengths of things that you could stretch out. I agree. Depends, I, I, suppose. I, I think, yeah, I think definitely you're going to reach for stuff first, and then immediately second. Yeah. yeah. Immediately Other. second, you'd be like, well, what if I just used all of my stretching <laughs> powers to just be me but with just a little bit extra like just in there. on your feet of course of course <laughs> yeah because yeah. Yeah. your shoes just don't fit yeah that should go well and uh, yeah I, <laughs> i'm drinking a delirium tonight which is a belgian strong beer it's 8.5 and it's going down very nice awesome man well I, we i know i haven't Except seen anything done. you've drawn for tonight so yeah i'm pretty I'm excited, excited for when you flip around the camera to uh check out where you got to it's just science <laughs> just science <laughs> just <Yeah>. science <laughs> johnny the science guy everybody but of course joining <laughs> us as always our fellow co-host and friend nate wells nate you are up hey guys nate wells uh today i'm gonna be drawing johnny storm the human torch uh i drew him in this i was i was talking to the guys earlier pretty specific pose i think i was gonna go for like just you know a superhero pose and he's going to be on fire and it's going to be cool. But then it ended up being a little bit more specific and I didn't have any of the background stuff around him. So I had to figure out the context for why he would be in this sort of like, I'm going to fall over pose <laughs> I, I, is how I would describe it. Um, when I flip it, you guys can see, but uh, so the ground is opening up around him and, and I'm imagining like the mole man or like the big, Jack Kirby ugly like mole man monster is is breaking through the ground and uh, he's like ah shit um and that's that's what I'm drawing today that's a good work drawing lots of lots of fire is really what I wanted to draw just like lots of fire it's like I want to draw a guy on fire um and then I was like oh right it's got to be uh the Human Torch so I drew a four <laughs> there's a four on his cheek nice <laughs> nice um. But tonight, uh, I'm drinking a LaCroix, and it is yellow-flavored, um, <laughs> limoncello-flavored. Really good. <laughs> yeah. Limoncello. Yeah, it's kind of, like, creamy. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm enjoying it. But, guys, of course, rounding out this quartet, it's none other than Mr. Fantastic himself, Todd Blackwood. <laughs> Todd, you are up, buddy. <laughs> uh, hey, guys. Um, I am recreating... God help us all. Uh, this issue of um, Fantastic Four number seventy six, and uh, I thought I was getting away with a fast one by picking a bunch of headshots, but it's um, <laughs> it's actually been more complicated than I expected. So I've got um, a bunch of this stuff done, and right now it's kind of hard to tell what you're maybe looking at. But um, I've had to take each character. Uh, individually and uh, draw them on a separate uh, layer. Um, and then I'm redoing all the lettering 
uh, including like hand lettering the logo, which has been oh wow, well, yeah, been way more time consuming than I thought. Um, that I think there's my favorite issue of Fantastic Four, arguably, is our issue sixty five, and uh, in retrospect, I think maybe I should have chosen that one, um, which I have the original of. This is an original Fantastic oh, wow. Four sixty five with uh. What's his name? Ronan the Accuser from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. What's uh, uh, what's Reed doing there? They're all looks getting a weird shot shape. by his. They're all getting shot by his. Uh, uh, they messed with a robot in a previous issue, and he comes back to basically like you know be like you can't do that, and that's when they first find out there's a, a Kree Empire that's at war with the Skrulls. There's all kinds of stuff that gets set up in this issue. It's such a good. It's such good stuff. Don't mess with a robot. <laughs> they haven't messed with a robot. <laughs> yeah. Don't mess with a robot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hate to do this, guys, but I just got a call from somebody, and I have to log out really fast, and I'll I'll jump back in in a second. And, of course, guys, I am Michael Pickard, like I said, and tonight I'm going to be tackling Sue Storm, uh, probably the character of the Fantastic Four that I've paid attention to the least uh, in all of my comic fandom, even with the, the, the films that had come out when I was a kid, the first one and rise of the silver surfer, she was always the character that appealed to me the least. But as we get into the episode, uh, the first topic is going to be a question of what do you guys think is needed to make the fantastic four relevant? Because mm. I would argue that they have kind of sub been supplanted by, you know, Spider-Man, the X-Men, Captain America, Iron Man, all these other Marvel characters when the Fantastic Four truly are the, the base of the Marvel universe. It's where it all started mm -hmm. and uh, their significance has kind of waned from a popularity standpoint in modern times. Uh, and mm. that's something I want to cover a little bit. Uh, but to start the episode, I'm going to flip my camera around and I'll get into this pitch I have yeah. for Sue Storm. My images of Sue Storm fighting two scroll warriors uh, on oh, some alien yeah, landscape. Uh, got some sci-fi Kirby tech going on in here, some smoke elements. Uh, nice. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, I try to avoid drawing women just because my art style is very scratchy. And there's a classic saying in cartooning that the more lines you add to a face, the older it looks. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's going to be a, a difficult challenge for me to get Sue right here in this piece. Yeah. Um, just draw just a scratchy woman. Is that right? The scratchy invisible woman. Like we said, I could just avoid drawing her and be like, oh, look, it's the invisible woman. <laughs> yep, there you go. Yeah. But guys, so I have a, a pitch for a mini series involving Sue Storm. And I think it would be a good way to give the Fantastic Four uh, a level of pop culture hit in the way that the Vision miniseries from Tom King did for that character. Um, oh, yeah. But the series would be titled an invisible woman and much like Spider-Man life story would span several decades of the Marvel universe in real time. So as time <clears throat> progresses, decades change, the characters would get older and we would start in 1960s nice. with the beginning of the fantastic four and issue one would revolve around Sue and her relationship to Reed because Sue has had a lot of different love interests even though she's married to reed richards um particularly the big three are her weird relationships with namor the submariner her husband reed and victor von doom and i think from a cultural standpoint from a historical standpoint there's a really interesting story to be told about this invisible woman who was there uh around these important male figures in the marvel history um who doesn't get the credit she deserves and so with Ooh, each yeah. issue in each decade, we'd cover a different romantic angle of her life, but not from a romance standpoint of like the many loves of, of uh, Sue Storm. Uh, right, right, It would right. be more so this woman going through her life and constantly having to be second fiddle to these male figures who are, you know, the kings of two different nations, her husband, the smartest man on the planet. Um, but with each one evaluating her contributions and in a parallel to feminism at those times in those different periods and, and women's rights issues with each period uh, 
up through the early 2000s. So whether it be the 2010s, the 2000s, or even up to now being the uh, 2020s, um, that would be the structure of the story. But from a lens of we're going to com- we're going to show Sue in her relation to these male figures in her life, but not from the standpoint of being defined by those relationships. More so how those relationships shadow her effect on the Marvel history. But damn, that's really good. I want to read that. No, as, <laughs> I want that to be a thing. Uh, well, we'll see if it ever happens, but. I think there's a, a ability there, like a, an opportunity to shed a light on that character in a way that I don't think has been done before. Yeah, for sure. That would be great. Um, I would, so as the, I don't know whether I'm the only person here, but I have never had a, Fantastic Four has been, sorry, um, but one of the the big comic characters that I've never had any interest in. Um, I feel like I'm, similar to a lot of moviegoers in that way i guess Mm -hmm. um and for me i yeah i don't know i've just never i don't know which one i should like i kind of like the thing a little bit in concept mostly i really don't like reed richards which is ironic Uh because i'm drawing him tonight um i do quite like sue storm and then johnny storm I, i find really annoying so I don't know what it would. What did you ask? What it would like need to become relevant? Yeah, per, not particularly what you would do with the characters to make them relevant, which was what I had done with that that concept of question. But what do you think could be done to make these characters more relevant or more popular? Mm, well, I do feel like, like I said, I think I, I, I can't pinpoint why I've never really gravitated towards them, but I feel like I am the same as a lot of moviegoers. And probably a lot of the general public who aren't massive comic fans, because they don't do so well. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'm not. Sh- I can't pinpoint why that is, but I've just never really. None of them have been like, oh yeah, no, that's the one I love, so I'll follow the whole thing. They're all just like, okay, they're there. Um, although when drawing this, um, I was like looking at old, like Kirby drawings and things like that. And there was like an aspect of like cosmic horror, which is where I'm now zooming out to one of the screens behind Reed. So I put mm. in like a big eye with like tentacles around it. And nice. You specifically said not, you know, not necessarily what you would do with the character. But I'm going to go against that and say if I was doing it while I was drawing this and adding it to Reed Richards and looking at Kirby drawings and shit, I was like, hey, that's that's why I would read it. If they like went back to old school with like retro sci-fi and like cosmic horror and like really went out there with it, that would make me enjoy it a lot more. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I think yours it, is better, be, Mike. <laughs> it'd be cool if like the series was like a superhero, like uh like Rick and Morty or something. I don't know. Like that would be <laughs> yeah. That would yeah, be super be fun. Um Yeah, yeah, and you actually you just get rid of Reed Richards and 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 Rick is is Mister Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I think that would be cool though. Like just a you know, keep it kind of light, fun, wacky out there sci-fi. Uh, mm. I think that could be really cool. Um, you know, I I I like the Fantastic Four to be actually kind of light on the, like the straight super heroics. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think they need to like be necessarily like saving the citizens of New York all the time. Um, yeah, they're a little more adventurous, space adventurous in my mind. Yeah, and you know, like, yeah, they like reads just like a scientist. You know, yeah. like yeah, he's a superhero, but mostly he's a scientist that has stretchy mm. arms. Um, yeah, like he mostly just like works with the other scientists or like the government on solving crises you know and like johnny probably uses the human torch persona to like i don't know book gigs on like daytime television or something yeah (laughs) johnny i like your pitch a lot actually um in contrast to dr strange because um 
two elements of Lovecraftian horror are the magical mm. elements and the more sci-fi elements. And I think you could kind of divide those two elements of the Marvel universe between those two franchises. Whereas uh, Doctor Strange would of course deal with the more mystical elements of that kind of horror or, um, or threat, I should say that level of chaos or concept. Um, yeah. Whereas the Fantastic Four could go more in the sci-fi direction of that yes. whole pitch. Yeah, I think I would enjoy that. Like, and uh, they could tap into the whole. I mean, I know Wonder Woman kind of tried to to do that, and it's a little late now for the Stranger Things kind of. I feel like that ship has sailed a little bit, but you could kind of do that a little bit. That's kind of what I liked about it while I was drawing it. Was like the retro sci-fi horror kind of element of it nate what about you my friend what would you do or recommend to make the fantastic four more popular i don't know like i said i i I would lean away from like the super heroics um and you know there's some comics where they kind of do that where they make them more just like larger than life kind of figures um and you know, good good members or, or uh, people in the Marvel universe, but they're not like the like the superhero team is like that's the Avengers. That's your your big superheroes. You know, the X Men. Like, yeah, they're you know saving people, but they're kind of like a, an activist group almost. Yeah. Um, and like the uh, yeah the the Fantastic Four, they're kind of like super scientific adventurers uh, yeah and like reed just solves sciencey problems and you know the others help out as much as they can um <laughs> but yeah like I, I would focus on the family elements of it you know because that, that's always the thing with the fantastic four is that it's like a this is a story about family um you know chosen family over birth family and all that yeah uh, so yeah, just focus on like those ideas, and yeah, like I w- I would just lean away from the superhero thing, especially if we were talking about like the context of a new movie, you know, and in, in, in the MCU, you like the whole thing's built around the Avengers, um, and I I think the tone of those movies is perfect for the FF, but like make them, make them not just a team of superheroes, uh, yeah, and and don't just make. Uh, Reed Richards, the new Tony Stark, I would I would say. Yeah, definitely. I think that the tone of of the MCU is is kind of perfect, you know, for the Fantastic Four more so than most Marvel properties. Mm. Uh, since it is so like sort of fantastic. Uh, didn't didn't mean to use that word. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, sci fi heavy. Um, and even just like the look of it, like, I'm just like, man, it screams, uh, fantastic four at me, but, uh, we didn't, we haven't gotten it yet. And we got fan four stick instead <laughs> two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And concept, it's such a, it's, it's a really strong concept. I think do the fantastic four, but make it, you know, a, a body horror story. Mm. Um, but then they, I, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know what they did. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, that film is definitely a case of of uh, execution, which, of course, if you've been watching Ink Drink Think, you know that's something Johnny struggles with. Uh, conceptually great, <laughs> execution not so much. Um, bringing back. Old I really jokes. like that you keep coming back to this. <laughs> well, the truth hurts, my friend. But. <laughs> <laughs> This is a good running running bit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that Johnny's like, yeah, this one's really great, guys. I really like this, this is a good joke. one. I really like this one. <laughs> this one I love them. <laughs> but but with Fan Four Stick, it's like Nate said, I think the concept is so great. Um, like that, I think, could have been a really great way to make people interested in the Fantastic Four um, on paper. But that film is just riddled with problems. Mm. Uh, I, I actually remember watching it with a friend cause I had seen it before and he had not. And we're watching it together and we're, we're kind of like talking the shit during the film. And all of a sudden they get to the finale of the movie and he's like, wait, did the climax just start? And I was like, yep. And he was like, what, when was any of this set up? 
when was any of this problem <laughs> established? And I was like, it wasn't. Just just watch and enjoy. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a that's a real shame that that movie was what it was. I wasn't crazy excited for it before it came out, but you know, I was curious about it, and then it just was that movie and uh mm. you get you get sad when you watch it even if you're not a fan you just realize that what you're watching is pretty bad well it's it's funny isn't it because i fantastic four is the the weird one in movies where it's part of that i can't think of any other example like this where it's part of that contract you the guys, have you guys... contrast. yeah yeah so they have to put out a fantastic four movie oh yeah uh -huh. however many years so, like, I mean, they don't anymore, fortunately. But I can't think of an example of that in anything else. And it's really weird. And has led to some weird fucking movies. Or, well, not very weird, just shit. Well, it almost led to some really weird movies. Are you guys familiar with the, the crossover that was planned between the X-Men, Fantastic Four, uh, Ghost Rider, and Daredevil? at fox no oh i i think i've heard of it uh there's a great video on it i believe from mr sunday movies on youtube uh shout out to that channel mm. who is infinitely bigger than we are but makes fantastic content and short yeah, content great. so um you'll probably shorter stop content. watching here and go check out this video from them um <laughs> but <laughs> yeah they have a great video about it but it's it's so bizarre it was essentially going to be civil war but they didn't have any of the characters that were prominent in Marvel's Civil War, the comic book. And so it was going to be the X-Men fighting the Fantastic Four and Daredevil. And it was going to be insane. <laughs> there was a scene where wow. Wolverine gets his arm cut off. It, it's a bizarre concept. <laughs> yeah, that's... I'm really... I, I'm interested to see that movie now. I really like the idea of movies that never actually made it i really want to watch them all todd we've been talking about um fan four stick a little bit uh you being a huge oh. fantastic four fan have you seen the movie <laughs> what are your thoughts on it no i i i should but i i barely could get through the other two um and i they weren't terrible but they weren't what i they weren't great the way the marvel movies have been uh mm. the other marvel movies i should say I, I should sit down and watch it. Um, but for me, it's kind of like the Daredevil movie that came out with Ben Affleck. It's like, I love the character and the, what it's based on so much that when they do it wrong, it's like, you know, scratching nails across a chalkboard. Um, yeah. And especially because I'm, I'm not surprised by that. I'm what I'm surprised by is when they get it right. And the Marvel movies have consistently been for the most part, really doing it right. And so the idea of a Fantastic Four movie that does it right is just mind-boggling to me, which I think is going to happen. I hope. Better. Uh, uh, yeah. So I, I, I should sit down and watch it, though. I am curious. There's nothing like a great, a good train wreck sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Todd, how would you have it done right? As someone who is not, I don't, I've never liked Fantastic Four, so I don't understand what it's... Um, what, what the the good in it is without being too harsh <laughs> well i the quick answer to that for me is look at the cover of any jack kirby stan lee classic fantastic four cover and then look at a poster or of of anything of the movies that have been made and see all the differences and that's the first thing um, okay so that's ben, not ben, far off ben, well, Ben Grimm has to be done right. He's he's as iconic as any of the other, any of the comic greats. But the mm -hmm. technology has not really been there. He's been a guy in makeup, or he's been changed too much, and um, he's really specific. He's he's just so great, uh, but he has to be done right. And that's kind of the thing I have my fingers crossed for is that they do a real blend of the kirby and and john byrne version of of uh of ben Grimm because he's so fun he's so funny the dynamic of those characters together is like the incredibles are fantastic four movies 
essentially mm -hmm. like er yeah everything they do in those movies that's like they're frustrated okay well if marvel's not going to do it let's just do our own version of everything we love about the fantastic four all the characters their powers have just been kind of switched around you know so the lady's stretchy the girl turns invisible the boy's really fast as opposed to being the human torch and one's younger and one's older and Mis mr incredible mr fantastic like it's all you know he's really strong like the thing but the the thing is really funny um anyways what's my point uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> so like a good example of done correctly the the movies that really blew my mind at marvel were the captain america movies and the way that they did every version of his costume and it was comic book accurate even if it was just a nod you know um but it's like it's all based on the pre-existing material and everything they had to adjust it for film but nothing's too far afield it's all really based on classic stuff um and and i don't think like the fantastic four stories are way more iconic than just about anything else marvel's done with the exception probably of a lot of the big moments for spider-man like green goblin mary jane watson gwen stacy and her passing and you know all that kind of stuff but like the fantastic four there's so many gigantic storylines that happen um galactus is the big one that was the mm. that was a watershed moment in, in superhero comics uh the the team ups the the rivalry between the thing and the hulk is huge like that was the original comic book strong guy rivalry it was like who would win um you always want to see them duke it out and also the so I don't know if you if you haven't read much Fantastic Four. Like Ben Grimm is a really interesting character because he's he doesn't like being his, the way he is. He wants to go back to normal, and Reed's always trying to cure him. So he's he's pissed off about it, and so a lot of the heroism that has to happen for him is getting over feeling sorry for himself and being a hero. Um, which is interesting because what's where it gets really funny and kind of bugs bunny like is that the human torch is the one guy that refuses to feel sorry for him and constantly makes fun of him and gives him shit and but in a sense you see what he's doing he's trying to cheer him up by doing that and they're best friends underneath it all but they have real warner brothers cartoon moments where like ben Grimm will be cleaning up a room and then Johnny Storm will come up and come over and mess it up again and then fly out the window. And you know, the, <laughs> those, are, those are the moments I loved in the comics that really won me over. But then something really huge would happen. Some hair in the fabric of whatever. And the, the, you know, only the, it was like one of those things where it was like, if you just had to beat it up, you could call Thor or the Avengers or whoever. But when it was something really just earth galaxy shattering there was one guy who could figure it out and that was reed richards and the fantastic four and they were the ones that came along that were like we're the only ones who can fix this thing um i and those those books that that stuff really holds up i would highly recommend just grabbing an issue and reading it and i think you'd really enjoy it um and I also think that there's a run. So the great run is issue one through a hundred of Fantastic Four for me is the quintessential Fantastic Four right there. But the other great run is probably the John Byrne version from the eighties after he left X-Men uh, and decided that, you know, he and Chris Claremont were going to kind of have a rivalry. Like they, they had a, a rivalry between the X-Men and his Fantastic Four book. And so both of them were, really going great guns and um that was some great stuff uh beautiful drawing uh alone but the stories were really fun and firing on all cylinders but it was all uh, you know he took he didn't change things he took it back to what kirby and lee did and then just kept going with the story so to speak and i i have a feeling that they're gonna hit all the big points with the in the movies the same way they did in captain america in the fantastic four but they're also going to pull a bunch from from the burn run 
um i don't know if that answered your question but <laughs> no i think that did i think that did and it it answered my question in that that's kind of what i was thinking when i was drawing read here um in that i've yeah. approached it never really liking the fantastic four uh, i looked at a bunch of old covers mm -hmm. and there was like like i said this kind of weird retro cosmic horror element that i quite liked this weird yeah sciencey kind of well when you say you like don't when like science it. is just magic and it's like you... old-timey science where it's like yeah they can do whatever and there's yeah weird aliens all over the place oh and that was something i i kind of tried to put into this drawing and i it makes yeah. me like the fantastic four a little more the idea of it but you say, but you say, like when you say you don't like the Fantastic Four necessarily, like did have you read? The, I don't. It sounds well. Like no, you, when I say I don't like it, I mean I've better. never, as a kid, I was never drawn to them. So you're indifferent, maybe. Yeah, yeah, more right, indifferent right. than I don't like it. I've not read it and disliked it. I've just never yeah. picked it up at all. Yeah, it's yeah. See, I grew up reading. I it. Fantastic Four for me was something that I I actually did, thought Kirby's art was pretty crude, and I enjoyed certain things. And there were drawings I saw by him that I was like, "Wow, that's amazing!" And of course, one of the earliest comics I ever got was X Men Twelve. It was like a reprint or something. And the Sentinels are still some of my favorite villains of all time. But Fantastic Four was something I went back to and I thought, God, this art looks terrible, but I'm kind of enjoying this. And then I slowly started realizing how great it was. Mm. And um, and I was surprised by how well it held up. I figured the John Byrne version, I I had started reading, I take it back, I started reading the, fan, the John Byrne stuff and really like that, figured it probably made the Kirby stuff obsolete, but not in any way, shape or form. I mean, talk about cosmic i mean just the the ideas that they threw out there that were every issue is something bananas going on the inhumans uh the kree scroll stuff going on in outer space i mean it was just a just a fabulous crisis from one issue to the next um that, you know so i yeah i would recommend I, I don't know. I, I actually I don't know exactly where to start if you want to get into the Fantastic Four, but mm. you know, there's not. I I mean I could recommend certain issues, I guess, but I don't know. But Todd, also lest we forget, um, yeah. the exploration <laughs> of the Marvel universe through the Kirby and Stanley run, like the introduction of Wakanda, even. Um, well, yeah, like. Yeah, I touched on it a little bit um, before you got here, but um, this this series, the Fantastic Four, is responsible for introducing so many elements of the Marvel universe that people oh, love God. today. But yeah, like there's a almost a component yeah. missing of like the popular fandom of Fantastic Four. Like Absolutely. something's not clicking with these characters with the mass media that mm. potentially the Marvel movies are going to solve. Um, hopefully yeah yeah they they really do have the potential to like bring these characters back to the forefront in the way that they were for decades mm -hmm. yeah. in comics absolutely yeah and maybe they and won't I, cancel I... the comics again <laughs> <laughs> well now they own the rights so well, it's a little different <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i i my impression of that is that what they keep doing that for is that i think they want to bring the comics more in line with what they're going to end up doing in the movies and maybe they're just jumping the gun but but i that's just a wild guess on my part i mean i you know with that said i hope john i hope the rumors are chiru and john krasinski's mr fantastic and all that stuff like that seems like a no-brainer yeah they've got to at least be considering it right oh yeah he apparently keeps talking about it where he's like, I can't wait to be Mr. Fantastic. And it's like, see, this better be true. Cause I mean, it, it, as great as Robert Downey Jr. And Chris Evans were as Captain America and Iron Man, like, you know, those are, those are characters that could have been really dumb and bland and they got treated really well by those actors. But these are great characters that, um, you know, done right. By, like that's a great role for somebody to take on somebody's whoever 
ends up doing it is going to get really lucky with having some really cool stuff to do. There's great pathos, all kinds of stuff. And Krasinski seems like the obvious choice to me. Uh, next to Krasinski, though, do you guys have any uh, fan casting for a potential MCU Fantastic Four roster? Mm. Uh, Andrew Garfield as the as the Human Torch. That would be fun. <laughs> Keeping that the tradition good, of yeah. recasting old Marvel <laughs> actors in the MCU. Yeah. It is a it is a rumor, and I hope it's true, but I have no idea. I don't know if it was a rumor or if somebody just thought it was a fun name to throw out, but somebody at least threw the name. Um, uh, what's the guy that plays uh, Billy from Stranger Things? They threw oh, his David name out. For, for oh, Johnny. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. He yeah, did they, great, I was actually. like, oh, yeah. I, I, I like him. Yeah. He was um, really good in the Power Rangers movie, which... Was not a great oh, was he? movie. Yeah, he was really good in that, surprisingly. Wow. He's a good lead. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I thought he was really good in Stranger Things. I mean, I, I did love sure. his character, but I, I liked, you know, the job he did. Uh, yeah. It could have been, you know, really, you know, sort of one-dimensional and hammy and dumb, but I, th I thought he brought something to it. Yeah. He has to be an arrogant guy. Not an arrogant, but he's like the guy that he's like Ferris Bueller. He's like the guy that everything works out for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He is not Peter Parker. And that's another great rivalry that they need to do is that the the comedy that happens when Spider Man and Human Torch get in the same room is hilarious. Spider Man really resents Human Torch. Because <laughs> he's Spider Man's like I can't pay my bills and Aunt May's having a heart attack. And meanwhile, this asshole's getting all the girls, <laughs> He's, you know, and Johnny Storm's like, I need to be excused by, for my homework. I have to go save the universe. And they're like, Oh, Johnny. <laughs> Spider Man's <laughs> always like, <laughs> that would be great if they actually skewed him that much younger um, yeah. than the rest oh, of they... the roster to have that rivalry they with should. Tom Holland. Yeah, they should. No, they definitely need to. Yeah, that would be, I think that would be, be really a major flexible. mistake. Mm. I've I've seen a lot of fan casting though for um, you know, uh, Emily Blunt and John Krasinski as Mister Fantastic and Invisible Woman. Uh, I've seen mm -hmm. like I've seen Andrew Garfield, Dacre Montgomery, uh, Zac mm -hmm. Efron for Human Torch. Like, yeah, I don't think I've I like the Zac Efron one. Me I think too. Yeah, cool. I like that. I was gonna say though, I don't think I've seen a single one that really nails Ben Grimm though. Like that that's the hardest role I think to cast. Because unlike well, yeah. Bruce yeah. Banner and the Hulk, um, where you can have Mark yeah. Ruffalo, who is of course a talented mm -hmm. actor. Mark Ruffalo actually would have been a really good Ben Grimm, I think. But uh hmm. aside that's from that um, yeah. yeah, that that's a hard role to cast because it, it is entirely motion capture slash voice acting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's such a God, yeah. Like that's I met Andy Pack. I think is his name the the like one of the primary designers for the Marvel movies. He was at a show. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I, oh yeah yeah I know that guy. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if they'd gotten the rights back to the Fantastic Four or if there it was kind of like an open secret that it was going to happen any second. And I asked him. I was like, "So what are you going to do when the Fantastic Four come back to Marvel? Because we all know that's going to happen." And I was like, "You know, Ben Grimm." And he was like. I was like, you know, you got to do like a classic Kirby, John Byrne thing. And he seemed, he kind of had this look in his eyes, like he was concerned about it. Like, yeah, I know I have to get that one right. And I was like, you can't really tell me more than that, can you? But <clears throat> I, I think Kevin Feige has spoken like he's, it, it's, it's a really important movie for him to get right. Um, but yeah, like they got to have a guy with a, He's basically Jack Kirby. Mm -hmm. You know, when you read between the lines. I've heard people try to argue that Jack Kirby is Mr. Fantastic, and I don't buy that. Um, he seems so much more no. pure New York. Um, is Mr. Yeah. Mr. Fantastic supposed to be likable? I've never found him to be likable. Oh, yeah. But I've never he's... read an, a standalone Fantastic Four issue. I've just read him in stuff. 
and he's, he's always good... just annoying. It really? His, yeah, his I always found him like. I read him like. Uh huh. Sorry, he's shown no, up no, in like ahead. Civil War that I've read and things <laughs> like that, and I've always just been like, oh well, don't. He's just kind of a plot device and also an asshole. Yeah, well, <laughs> who who wrote that, that, Bendis? Yeah, I think so. Well, there you go. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Yeah, that's that's revisionist history going on there. That's not the classic character. For one, for one thing, Reed Richards and Fantastic Four, but Reed Richards in particular was one of the first guys before it was cool who was like, when people talk shit about mutants, he was like, don't be prejudiced. I don't like that. And mm. I was kind of shocked. I, he was a guy that, you know, usually you had mutants sticking up for themselves. Humans were sort of suspicious. You know, even Spider-Man, I think, and other characters would be kind of on the fence of, I keep hearing all these things about mutants. I don't know how I feel about them. And Reed Richards always was like, no, mutants are, are fine. They have a right to be the way they are. Don't treat them different mm. um but also like he's his problem is he's so smart that he needs to be brought back to earth and that's part of what M mrs Van or sue storm does so well in the relationship is she grounds him and the he feels a tremendous guilt about the fact that he's responsible for making ben Grimm into the creature that he is um right and, you know ben really lays into him a lot um but he's like so one of the great storylines that i'm pretty sure this is my prediction for the movies is that so when they do the galactus story they beat him but then he starts dying because galactus needs to eat and what he eats is planets and so naturally the fantastic four and the avengers have to stop him but then they stop him but then galactus is like man i'm in really bad shape and so after they do that, Reed Richards actually turns around and because the other guys like Tony Stark and Thor are like, well, I'll just let him die. And Reed Richards is the guy that goes, no, we can't do that. We have to save him. And they save him. He saves him. And then it comes back to bite him because what of course Galactus it does. then. Yeah, then Galactus turns around and goes and eats the the scroll homeworld and kills billions of creatures throughout the universe, or what it makes them homeless. And Reed Richards ends up being snatched out of his uh, from Earth by uh, Professor X's girlfriend uh, Lilandra, and put on trial uh, by the universe for for saving Galactus. And it's you mm. know. And he feels bad about it. Like he's like, they're right in a sense. Like I did. He's like, I did do all those scrolls, so maybe I shouldn't have done what I did. But then he's like, no, I, I, I have, I have to, I have to say I would do it again. It's my responsibility, you know. He, I think he's super likable. He's just aloof, and his people around him will kind of ground him and be like, hey, you know. Let's let's be funny here, but he's he's very different. He's not a he's not heroic in the way that like Captain America is, is sort of a leading man type. You know, he's more of a professor smoking a pipe and constantly. You can tell he's his mind's always halfway somewhere else because he's calculate. Like he'll he'll be having a conversation, and then he's like, "Yes, I just did these calculations for blah 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 while I was thinking about this other thing." <laughs> you know? Right. Like he's he's gonna make Tony Stark and all the other people look really dumb. Because he's he really is that much smarter than everybody else. I mean, I hope, anyways. That's the way he should be portrayed. Like his his intelligence is practically a superpower. Sorry, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> well, no, yeah, actually, you, Todd, um... you brought up um, Galactus, and I completely yeah. failed to think about that character in relation to the Fantastic Four. Galactus is a funny character from the standpoint that yeah. he he's really goofy looking. You know, his his design yeah, like. Is. It, it actually, this is a true tangent. I was talking to my girlfriend, Alyssa, about Galactus um, mm -hmm. post-watching WandaVision. And she goes, mm -hmm. oh, that's a cool concept. I imagined him being like this like black hole. And I immediately thought of Rise <laughs> of the Silver Surfer where he's yeah. in a yeah. space cloud. And right. I, was like, I was like, man, that movie gets a lot of flack for that interpretation of that character. 
but yeah, it's actually a really cool concept that it's like a traveling black hole that, that devours, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing about it is that I think on the surface, that stuff like Ben Grimm is another example, just like Galactus, where I think they come across as goofy. And then it comes down to whether you think you should do the comic book accurate version or the black hole. And I, it's one of those characters where I understand why people think they should change it, but I think you're doing it wrong if you change it. And I hope that they do it comic book accurate. Um, but it's, but yeah, like you, if you do it wrong, it's going to look really stupid, but if you do it right, it's going to look amazing. At least that's my opinion. Do you guys have any fan casting for a potential Galactus or Silver Surfer for that matter? Oh man, that's a good mm. question. Yeah, Boy. Silver Surfer would be a I feel like you'd have to get the right guy. Yeah. Galactus, I feel like they'd just be like, I don't know, Benedict Cumberbatch can be Galactus. Right. Um Yeah. Because he was, wasn't he? uh, He was Dormammu. Yeah. Yeah, he was Dormammu as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've probably overextended him at this point. (laughs) Nah, he'll do it. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have that Um, close connection? Yeah, Silver Surfer, I don't don't know. I actually really liked, um, for Silver Surfer, I really enjoyed um, Lawrence Fishburne's voice. Oh, it was him, wasn't it? Yeah, he's a great gravitas. Like his voice is similar to James Earl Jones. They both have just like deep, like I didn't know, like powerful voices. Um, Yeah, but it's great. Yeah, he was awesome in that role. They need somebody that sounds very Shakespearean. Absolutely, Um, that was that was kind of Dan's contribution in many ways to to him was was the dialogue was very Shakespearean, or you know. Dan doing Shakespeare, which is like William Shatner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be the next big Marvel bad guy, though. I mean, it's it's oh, got to be, without, the, you, without you know. Question. There's only so many, like, huge bad guys they have to choose from. You did Thanos. He's the original huge bad guy. Well, uh-huh. other than yeah. Doctor Doom, though. Right, right, yeah. You know? <laughs> I've seen some fun stuff about Doctor Doom. Uh, and have you? in terms of casting that I know that Keanu Reeves has been offered multiple roles in the MCU that he's declined. Hmm. But I think uh, actually this is going to probably sound crazy, but if you keep him behind the mask the entire time, I want an actor with a really crazy vocal range slash personality to be behind doom. And I think someone like, hear me out. Keanu Reeves, or Nicolas Cage would be really fun in that role. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch Nicolas Cage, Cage do anything. That's an interesting. I hmm. he's well. He if Nicolas Cage was able to actually get the uh, accent correct, like if you were able to give him like a Romanian yeah. slash Eastern European accent and actually nail it, I think his yeah. ability to just like scream and turn on a dime would be really fun. I would be concerned yeah. with either Keanu Reeves or Nicolas Cage getting an accent right for an entire movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. If you actually look up the Jack Kirby's version of Victor Von Doom before he became, you know, so like the origin, if you see his actual face, he looks like Keanu Reeves. Like, it, 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 it's not on the surface, I would be like, what? But like, I actually think you theory he could be a really interesting uh dr doom i kind of wonder if he's gonna try to be wolverine but i don't know what to think of that if you want to circle back around to the fantastic four we could start jumping around (laughs) to check out where everybody got to nate i am loving from afar what you're doing with your human torch let's zoom in and check out how far you got yeah i oh it's something I feel like kind of with the the pencils, like I'm just doing stuff and hoping that it turns out well at the end. I don't like drawing that way. I really don't. I like to have things planned out. But this one, I was, I just liked so many individual things. I was like, maybe they'll come together. And right now, I'm still kind of waiting for that to happen. 
Um, mm. But I, I, I do like those individual things still. Um, I don't know if I want the background to be uh, blacked out or not yet. I kind of had it like in my head that way, but now I'm here. I'm kind of like, well, I don't know if I want to do that because <laughs> that's going to be a lot of ink. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's a, I got a little messier uh, kind of with some of the anatomy and, and laying the flames on top of the anatomy that I wanted to. Uh, so I decided I'd just scribble on parts of him. Uh, but so far, so far, really no complaints with this drawing. Yeah, no, it's looking really good. Yeah, this one, it was it was tough to decide, though, if I was going to, like, actually draw the flames, like, with the brush, really, or do it graphically and kind of outline it or whatever. Um, clearly, I went with this, which I don't think if it was another drawing I might have done. Um, I tend to think, of, like, I like fire as kind of a graphic, like, shape. Yeah. Mm. But I wanted it to kind of, like, you know, again, play with the, the rendering on his body and everything. Uh, and so I did end up going in and trying to render the forms of, like, the, the fire and smoke. Um, and, yeah, we'll, uh, I'm still just hoping it works out. <laughs> well, hey, speaking of the hothead of our own team, Johnny. <laughs> how's your mr fantastic coming along <laughs> i just i want to say first of all where is all this animosity coming from I don't understand. america uh, <laughs> mm. it's the revolutionary good. war coming back buddy that's not right. fair at um, all that's not fair that's fair <laughs> very generous johnny uh, it's going pretty well. Um, so hang on, this was the sketch. So, I don't know how well you can see that. Not great. There you go. And then I've got this far with inking. Nope, that's my sign to say I'm going to be right back. There we go. <laughs> so, it's like Reed doing sciencey things. How well can you see that? Oh, that looks great, man. Thanks, buddy. Oh, yeah, I like yeah. that. Um, there's going to be stuff on the screens behind him, and the black is going to be all wires and things. Um, I've already blacked all of that out in one layer, so I am not sure how exactly I'm going to do that. But I'm going to figure that out somehow. It'll probably be a massive pain in the ass, but I will get there. Um, I'm pretty happy with the face. Yeah. Which is, I kind of tried to go for like a mm -hmm. retro thing. That That is um, a quintessential Reed Richards face expression. Yeah, I went you know, to go for some. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of figure this thing out. You know, it's all yeah, like yeah, kind of doing that. That's mm. awesome. And then I was actually when I was sketching out the um, this guy in the background, this big tentacly eye that I don't know whether you can see at all. Well, anyway, yeah, there's an eye right here, and it's like a big horrible tentacly space thing eye, and it was a purely coincidence or luck that when i drew it out i drew it like too like I, I just drew it normally front facing um and knew that afterwards i was going to take that layer and distort it to put it into the right dimensions for that plane that is like mm -hmm. facing read in more of a like 3d kind of way and i just drew the eye kind of pointing downwards and then when i put it in that at that angle it was coincidentally like looking right at Reed, which I was a big fan of because <laughs> it just looks creepy yeah. as fuck. Just this yeah. big screen behind yeah. him with this massive great. eye just staring at him. But yeah, yeah. it's going pretty well. Um, this is the first uh, like single image I've done for a while because I've been moving to trying to do more interior kind of stuff. And it's fun to get back to it. I want to go back and do some more for a little while. Take a, another break from interiors for a bit and do this for a little bit try and get better again you uh you fall out of practice of things very easily i think well todd while well, we have you actually why don't we jump around uh i actually <laughs> okay. because of your angle i didn't get to um spotlight your oh, drawing at all during the episode but that's my fault no 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 you're you're totally fine i'd love to see all of the elements you got to draw with the various character headshots and the silver surfer 
but I'm going real slow, man. It's pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, and it's interesting after we had that talk about Galactus, I'm kind of, I'm putting a bunch of shadow on Galactus so that I'm trying to do both the comics accurate version, but also like something slightly different with him. Um, and it, as in, I'm putting in all the Kirby lines that he has in his mask to make it, uh, look more like, um, like Tron, lack of a better way to put it. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's kind of working and not yet. I, I probably, I'm going to have to do this. I'm probably not going to finish by the end of the episode. Um, there is Sue Storm. Probably got to turn my brightness down on my machine. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, Ooh, one of those, I had to look yeah, up like, like Mihai Perdue. She's got Marilyn Monroe's hairdo right there. Yeah. <laughs> that looks you like know. um the big eyes painter. I forget that uh, yeah. artist well, name, but it looks like that yeah. interpretation of Marilyn Monroe. I'm going way manga on stuff lately, especially the way I draw girls. Um that's actually about all I've got done. <laughs> uh I've also got I, I really enjoy drawing the silver surfer here. And I really Yeah, I, I love more. that silver surfer. Um it's oh yeah interesting because i'll tell you so i googled surfers and um you know silver surfers always got like a light coming out of the end of his uh light streak from his surfboard but i was looking at the way that the they kind of the surf reacts to their boards and there's all this you know foam coming up from the sides and i was like those are curvy lines and i don't I'll have to look up what other people do with Silver Surfer, but I was like, that's there's all kinds of opportunity for Kirby Crackle and all that kind of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So I tried to really play that up. Uh, and, you know, the problem is I don't want to go too far because he's super tiny in the image. There's no room for him. Um, but, yeah, this I, I need to draw more Silver Surfer, man. That was really fun. I really enjoyed yeah. drawing that guy. I actually, I also looked at surfer reference pictures for when i drew silver surfer in like is it our first episode i think it's it episode one ago. yeah it was yeah yeah did you do silver surfer the first episode i did silver surfer and galactus oh. that was a fun one oh, that was the right. first time yeah. i was drawing him and it was very fun that was a fun one yeah. with all the dots <laughs> yeah it was it was yeah that's right sometimes it's, it's, it's fun in that Dude, horrible wow. labor <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's fantastic it is fantastic on this fantastic <laughs> episode. I, I just keep saying that, don't I? <laughs> it's just good to catch everybody on this one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, here, guys, I'll jump around to my piece just to uh, round out the quartet. Um, yeah. Definitely bit off a lot more than I could chew for our uh, shorter uh -huh. one-part episodes here. Um, but as you can see... Um, I've got most of Sue done, actually, um, and a little bit of the scroll here in the foreground and some of the tech going on. But there's a oh, yeah. lot I need to do with the background um, and the brushwork, for that matter. So uh, just so you can see it a little more clearly now, I know at the beginning of the episode it might have been a little more difficult with um, the bright light source I have. But there's a scroll back here, and Sue's kind of doing this bubble thing around both of the scroll's heads to uh, knock them out. Not kill them, just, uh, you know, put them to sleep with a little bit of a suffocation. And, um, of <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun. I looked up some, like, Kirby-style tech for uh, these, like, uh, sci-fi-looking 80s yeah. radio wave kind of stuff. Uh, this one kind of looks like a radio speaker, like a big mm -hmm. disco speaker on its back. Um but yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with this one. I'm I'm trying to go a little bit less hatchy with Sue in particular. Um, mm -hmm. uh, going back to that whole notion of uh, less lines uh, for female characters to not age yeah. them too much. Um, mm. I think I did it. I nailed it in the face. And uh, when I eventually scanned this, I think she actually came out looking like Kaylee Cuoco from Big Bang Theory and uh, the Harley Quinn TV show. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. 
which mm. totally unintentional, but I think works well for this character in particular. Um, mm. but yeah, I've got these kind of beefy looking scrolls. Um, with Ultramax, I draw a lot of baggy clothes, so I kind of wanted some like tight, form fitting, muscular attire um, for mm. these guys. So, like, I got to have some fun with the anatomy with like the lats here and the shoulders. And this guy in the background is going to be a lot of fun to do um, with his rib cage and perspective. But yeah, all in all, I'm really enjoying how this piece is coming out so far. Uh, there's no chance in hell it's going to be done anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> usually most of the times I, I post my piece first on the Instagram page, um, just because I have the file available. Um, uh -huh. this, this might be the last one I post next week with this episode, because <laughs> no. this is going to be a while. There's a lot to do on this drawing. Oh, I was, I was going to say, I, I, I like the, uh, I guess the brushwork on the, uh, the black parts of the suit. Um, yeah, that looks, that looks really nice. Thanks, man. Also, like just the classic that classic suit. When I was drawing this one, I didn't know. I was like, "There's, there's some like, okay, you know, versions like newer versions of the, the suits that they wear." But I mean, nothing really beats that like original look for them. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Like Spider Man. Gotta be careful about redesigning it. You can do it, but yeah, tricky. Yeah, and also, we didn't talk about it too much during the episode, but just to touch on it while we're here, I think the Fantastic Four suit design is one of those costume looks that isn't inherently super heroic. It's literally just boots and tights. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's nothing really flamboyant oh. or you know extraordinary about the character costume designs, but right. it, it feels very space and sci-fi, which works for mm. them in particular. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Like any other character, I think this suit design might be uh, considered boring. Yeah. But the the role they the niche they fill in that sci fi exploration character model, I think, works really well with this blue black contrast suit. Yeah, that's actually something I've I really liked. Another thing I liked looking at old Kirby stuff, oh, and yeah. just the older Fantastic Four stuff is how baggy. And like foldsy their their suits were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lots of fabric going on in those original drawings. Yeah. Wow. And you guys know I like a suit with, with folds and seam lines. Mm hmm Do you? Oh yeah. You need Actually, to draw yeah, or to wear. Quick, quick tangent, Johnny. I'm gonna to flash back to yours really quick <laughs> just to comment oh, right. on your um your usage of seam lines in uh Reed suit. I think worked oh, really yeah. well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had to get it in there. You know, I had, yeah. <laughs> if I'm doing a retro character like that, I, it would be crazy to miss it. Mm. I kind of, I quite like the, uh, the way I made the gloves work, like with like a seam going along the palms and the fingers. Yeah. I like that. Oh, that's, that's nice. awesome. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things where I draw it and I'm like, I want that. I want those gloves, even if they're weird and go all the way up my arms. I want that. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, Johnny, I would love if you get to color this that um, you do like a duo tone on those gloves. Uh, just as a pitch, it would be cool if yeah. instead of black, you did like blue and navy, but the palms Ooh. were the same blue as the rest of the suit. That would be good. Okay, um, now yeah. I have to color it. So thanks for that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I don't know if I'm trying to add extra work to you. I just thought it would be a fun idea. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, to be honest, I have a lot of we're in we're in lockdown i have a lot of hours you're, true. You're, you're only giving me fun things to do <laughs> <laughs> well hey guys that just about wraps up the video uh as i go back out to our multi-cam shot here uh of course this has been the fantastic four episode of ink drink think uh, let us know down in the comments below which of the fantastic four you're most excited to see in the mcu and if you're so inclined, please give us a fan casting that we'll hopefully reply to and uh, either bash or agree with. Of course, guys, check out the description of this video. You can find the links to the Instagram pages of myself, Johnny, Nate, and Todd, where you can follow all of our artistic endeavors, as well as a link to the official Ink Drink Think Instagram page, where you can check out all of the finalized drawings from not only this episode, but every single episode of Ink Drink Think thus far. 
Of course, guys, remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And until next time, episode 20, I have been Michael Pickard, joined by my wonderfully talented co-hosts and friends, Johnny Wise, Nate Wells, and Todd Blackwood. We'll catch you guys in episode 2-0.